One of the, um, I believe, one of the reasons for Rabbi Stolberger's uh, tremendous success in Valley Torah, not just Valley Torah, but uh, many venues, is because, I believe this is my own personal opinion, that not only is it a very big Tamil Chacham, there are many big Tamil Chacham, um, but he's also a Baal Musar, uh, following in the path of our Rebbe, Rashi Vizek Hatzalik Racha. But I think also because he, so to speak, inherited something from the Rashiva, and that is a tremendous love of every member of Kla Yisrael. And uh, I believe very firmly that the students of Valley Torah realize that. And the uh, people of Valley realize that, then anyone uh, who hears Rabbi Stolberg who speaks realizes that. And Dvarim um, Ayotzi Menalev, and as we all know, Chazal tell us when we all could sense that, can all feel that. So um, I think that it's a, it's a very big cover for us to have Rabbi Stolberger uh, come in all the way from the valley. You know, it, it's uh, very hard to come where it's a little cooler and it's very difficult in the summer with the breeze that we have here. But um, but seriously, we really appreciate Rabbi um, Stolberger's uh, coming and gives, uh, giving us the chizuk and uh, for us to begin to get on our way to Nechama. I also want to mention, I want to thank uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kl- Tomer Kleinerman, who are sponsoring Rabbi Stolberger Shear. And that itself should tell you a lot, because uh, Tomer is an employee of uh, Rabbi Stolberger. So how many employees would sponsor the... I mean, I wasn't... Was on their own, without being asked, or of course... Uh, asked to sponsor their employers a shear. So it tells you really a lot. So without further ado, it's really a cover to present Rabbi Stolberg. I didn't tell you the job was on the line for now. <laughs> well, it's always indeed a I guess we can still use the word pleasure because just to see everybody into being this special Mokam Torah, although the word pleasure and Tishua don't really go together, at least not yet. We are waiting anxiously for that time when Tishua becomes that day that fully justifies us not saying Tachnun. Today, even yesterday, by Mincha, we didn't say Tachnun. It's a full fledged Yantif in, in its core. And yet we're still. Still not there yet, Bez Hashem, very, very soon. But the Chavetz Chaim does tell us sort of what are the, sort of the prerequisites and what are the requirements for this incredible event that we are so anxiously awaiting. And he sort of, you know, really makes it a mandate for every single Jew to have certain emotional realities exist within them, which are not so simple which are challenging, but I'd like to share them with you. And uh, I think there's tre- tremendous benefit, certainly in the big picture, but even every single day. And he points out that the question of Tzipisil Yeshua, this question, do you really yearn? I don't know if it's the best way to, to translate Tzipisil Yeshua, but Tzipisil Yeshua, that you're waiting for the salvation, you're yearning for the salvation, you're anticipating the salvation. One thing is for sure about that expression, if there's not clarity in your mind that there will be a salvation, then you can't really be to peace of Yeshua. You can't be waiting for something that you're not even sure is going to happen. You, you can sort of hope and pray, but see, peace is a much stronger word. <clears throat> it's a word that clearly connotes this is going to happen. I know it in my bones. I have absolutely zero question about it. It's going to happen. I just don't know when. And this is something that we have to recognize and internalize because the, he points out that the reason why the Nevi'im compared the gula that they predicted was going to happen, the gula that we read this morning in the Torah, it's going to happen. The Torah says very, very clearly, I'm going to gather you up from all corners of the world and bring you back. This is, this is and just like everything else in the Torah came, has come true, this is going to come true as well. But he, but he says the Nevi'im compared to a pregnant woman, because a pregnant woman, yes, is some level of anticipation, unless she's early, but if she's, you know, going for a while, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, 
right? There's no question there's a baby coming. You know, you, you check the sonogram on the daily, you know there's a baby there, there's no question about it, it's coming, you just don't know when. And therefore the message of the Navim are trying to convey to us is on the same plane that we have to feel not if, but only when, and with an emotional reality that indeed this is going to be true. See, peacefully assure, it's going to happen. And, and when we, we can feel that, and when we know that, it is really, it is really we're able to then springboard from that recognition that there's a God in the world and he is waiting to redeem us. He's waiting to bring us back. We just have to sort of do our part and, and make that connection. And certainly, fundamentally, is to believe it. I mean, we might have some other things to do in terms of the Olam Chaveroi, Tshuva, etc., etc. But the Chavetz Chaim goes to great lengths to try to dispel any argument in our minds that, mm, not this generation. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. He, he goes, he's so strong, and it's so amazing that he, he tells us, in very clear terms, it's a fantastic piece in Perak Beis and Sefer Mach Yisrael. It would be definitely worth it for anybody to go through the, uh, the entire chapter very, very carefully. But he, he, the basic points I want to share with you, he says, don't, first of all, don't start telling me that we're not on the Madrega. Well, come on, look at around, look at the world. we got so many problems. There's technology and there's a craziness and there's their, the whole political atmosphere and, uh, and you know, you can't even mention God's name anymore very often in certain public places. Like, it's a crazy world. It's like, this is the generation. We have so many challenges and so many issues and this is the generation. He says, I don't want to hear that. Don't you just say that to me, says the Chavetz Chaim. Because first of all, when I could have an amazing statement, if I said it... <laughs> You can, you know, shoo me off the stage. It's not me. The Chavetz Chaim says it. The Chavetz Chaim says it. you can take it to the bank. The Chavetz Chaim says, and it's actually a pasuk in the Torah, that he says, when a Kodesh Baruch who wants to bring that salvation, to bring that redemption, to bring that time for the base of Midrash should be rebuilt, when that time comes, a Kodesh Baruch Hu's vision goes a little bit off. He doesn't see so carefully. He doesn't see all the details, all the problems. You know, a lot of times, and you know, uh, Sil Shisham compares it to a, to a, a parents when they want to look in Shepnachas from their family, when their family's together at the Shabbos table or at the Yantiv table, and you have all the kids with the grandchildren, everyone's getting along and everyone's smiling, everyone's having a good time. You don't, you don't even think about some of the issues you might be having, because look, look at the Nachas, everyone's getting along, there's nothing, no greater Nachas for a parent and a grandparent to have their children at the table together, happy, connected. So there are times that we, Akash Baruch Hu, will literally not see the faults. As I say that, that's what it says. He will not see the faults. The faults are there. Maybe individually we might have to deal with it. That's a difference. But collectively as a nation, Akash Baruch Hu doesn't, doesn't see them. It's time for the gula. I don't care. The gula is happening. And he says, if you think, how can it happen now? It's such Isn't that strange? Like it doesn't really fit into the world events. I mean, there when the Chavetz Chai wrote this talk of the Jews were downtrodden in Europe, they were decimated. Now, you know, it may be a little bit easier. We have a powerful army. I guess you can imagine if Chas Vashom Israel had to go to war, we can handle ourselves. We're in a, we're in a, we're in a country. Maybe the, it's a little bit different. But at the end of the day, he says, look throughout history. How HaKadosh Baruch Hu turned the world over a matter of seconds. We ourselves witnessed the, the fall of that, that iron curtain that was indomitable. It, was, it, it, it could never happen. How could the iron curtain fall? And all these kind of one after another after another in front of our eyes, the entire world turns over on its head literally in, in days and months. It can, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants something to happen, it can happen. See, so he's driving home this point. So again and again to remind us, oh, we have to feel it could happen. Why, why is he going through this? He's going through this because he knows it can't happen if we don't believe it's going to happen. It, it needs to be in our kishkis, not just that we're praying for it, not just that we're sitting on the floor and, and shedding tears over it. That's very important, very meaningful. But at the end of the day, it, it has to be coupled. And that's why the, the, the yanta factor of Tisha B'av is such an important factor because built into this day, is not saying tachnon, is recognizing that it's a yantav because we recognize within the sorrow and within the, the mourning, within the tears, that there is a salvation. And it's it, because we're celebrating it. In a sense, we're celebrating it, it right now by recognizing that it's a yantav. And then he says more so. He says, I just want you to know another thing. 
And don't try to say to me, don't try to argue with me. Yeah, the good old days. I mean, that great tzaddikim. I mean, now we can look back at the, the Chavetz Chaim's, you know, Dor, his generation, Rikivegir, the Groz generation, the Rambam's generation. I mean, all these great generations, and they couldn't bring Mashiach. And we're going to bring Mashiach. And again, these are thoughts that the Eitzar is very adept to getting into our heads, because the Eitzar is extremely good at trying to justify a lack of movement on our part, because what's the point? You just, look, look, come on, you know who you are, you know, he's very good at that. Yeah, come on, you're not going to really change, you're not going to really improve, just, you know, you are who you are, just give it up. Uh, greatness is for somebody else. You know, aspirations and striving, that's for the other guy, for the other lady. Yeah, come on, yeah, we, we know who you are, stop. And he's good. Chavaz Chaim is very good. I'm sorry, the, the Eitzhar is very good, but we, the Chavaz Chaim says we have to outsmart the Eitzhar. Can't fall for those arguments. So first of all, when it's time, it's time. And second of all, he says, you think? You think we're coming just on our own merits? We're coming on every single tzaddik, and every single tzaddikist, and every single Jew, every single simple Jew who's not simple, and every Jew who's, who left this world saying, Shema Yisrael Hashem al Hashem Achad, and there are millions of them, unfortunately, throughout Jewish history, who, who have said those words as they departed from this world. And we... What are we coming from? Just 70 years ago, we're coming from a Holocaust, a million and a half children, six million Kedoshim, that, that we are on their shoulders. He calls us sort of like a small people on the, on the shoulders of giants, he says. We're not as al we're, we're on the shoulders of giants. We're not in this by ourselves. We're not just one little uh, frozen entity within the framework of Jewish history. We are Jewish history. We are a continuity of that history. And therefore, absolutely, we have the right to say it could happen, it will happen, it could happen literally today. It could happen. That's the attitude that a Jew has to have. Because we're not in this by ourselves. We have to see ourselves as part of an ongoing destiny, the part of the Jewish people. And yes, the, the, every single person, every single blood that was shed, every single tear that was shed over the centuries is all calculated by a Kodesh Baruch Hu, and it's all waiting to to ultimately reach its crescendo with that moment, that incredible moment when, when it happens. I, I, I said it probably many times, I mentioned it to the guys and to the girls in the school. It, it can't be, uh, again, I don't know, will there be an announcement on, you know, on, on the Fox News or will we, I don't know, will we get a text, you know, Stuhlberger get on a plane in Al Al, you're in two hours, you're taking off, Mashiach is here, he's going to meet you, you and the rest of Klai Yisrael in the Halavai Bez Hashem. So, you know, I don't know how it's going to happen, but if we get that text, and we say, mm, who's playing a practical joke on me? You know, come on. You know, it, if that's our initial reaction, that's not a good sign. Our initial reaction needs to be, oh, finally, amazing, Baruch Hashem, let's go. If it happens to be a practical joke, that's an unfortunate consequence. But that cannot be our attitude. Our attitude needs to be the Chavetz Chaim's attitude. When there was a tumult around his house and he heard some noise outside, he ran to the closet to get his, uh, his uh, Mashiach suit to be ready for, to dance with Mashiach. That was his initial reaction. That has to be our initial reaction. So this sort of visceral level we have to try to get to is something that we have to work on every single day. But the truth of the matter is, the way to work on it, he also brings the Arizal because we talk about Lishuas Chakivinu Kalayom. The words we say every single day in Shemon Esrei. We're waiting for the salvation. We say, yes, Samachtov. We just said it. Yes, Samachtov. We say all of these philos in terms of connecting to the idea of Gula. And, but he says something very, very important. And I saw it also in the name of a different, of a different this is the name of the Arizal. The, the Chavetz Chaim writes the name of the Arizal. He says, We say those words that we yearn for your salvation every single day. We should have in mind, if we can get that moment of clarity and, and focus on our words, which clearly would be incredible. It's not just salvation from the point of view of, of ending the Golos and ending the, the exile. It's a Jew every single day. We have challenges. We have situations we're in. Financial pressures, family pressures, health concerns, whatever they might be. It might be a family member, it might be a neighbor, whatever it might be, there are things that face us. Who do we turn to when those things happen? We turn to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We have to turn to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We have to recognize, and again, this is, we're living in a world where this is not the prevailing attitude. 
The prevailing attitude is just the opposite, and it's been predicted it's going to be just the opposite. The Chavetz Chaim brings a Rav Chaim Valashin. It's a very famous statement. I'm sure you've heard other explanations about this particular phrase in Gemara. But the Gemara says that in times of Mashiach, Pnei Hadar, Pnei HaKelev. That's what the Gemara says. The, the face of the generation will be the, like the face of a dog. It's a different interpretation than not to say one is right. They're all right. They're all, they're all wonderful. But the Rav Chaim Valashin says something very fascinating. The Chavetz Chaim brings it. And he says that the pshat is of uh, the face of the generation, we like, like the face of a dog. He says, we don't, I mean, I don't have a dog, but I'm sure there are probably some uh, uh, pet owners here. If you throw a rock at a dog, I'm not saying you should do it, but if you throw a rock at a dog, the rock, the dog pounces on the rock and attacks the rock like, well, what, are you, what, are you, what are you hitting me for? The dog sees the rock as the problem. The dog sees the rock as the, as the aggressor towards him. The dog does not realize the rock is the aggressor. Somebody threw that rock. You're only focused on the rock, and yet you don't see the bigger picture, dog. I mean, not, not that we have any tightness, we don't have any complaints against the dog. The dog is limited in their understanding. But a human being should understand better. And says Rabbi Chaim Volosh, in the time of, of uh, Mashiach, in the time when, which we're living in, everybody seems, uh, we can all agree on that. This is Ikvis of the Mashiach. In the times of Mashiach, the people will look at events and not understand who's really behind those events. Pnei Adorah, Pnei Akelev. They won't understand. When somebody's, uh, somebody, his, the base of Levi brings this marshal, somebody's hitting you with a baseball bat. Well, you're going to ask, you're going to ask the ba- to the baseball bat, please don't hit me, please don't hit me. The baseball bat's hitting you. Somebody's controlling the baseball bat. What are, you, what are you talking to the bat for? Talk to the person who's got the bat. And what are we upset again about somebody else? You did this to me, you cost me this job, you cost me this shidduch. No. No. Wrong. Nobody cost you anything. How many times have we heard from our Rebbe Zatzal the incredible words that he would say with such heartfelt conviction? Because I guess he was trying to tell us, you're going to need to know this in life. Tamidim, he would tell us, you have to know this. No one in this world can give you one iota. And no one in this world can take anything away from you. Live, live, this, live life with that total clarity. No one can give you anything, and no one can take anything away from you. Everyone here is a shliach in the overall game, or, or the overall life, or the overall direction and mission of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He has everything planned out for us. And if we have an issue, it's not with the person. It's with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We don't have an issue with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu no, we know He loves us. You know, we know that He cares for us. We know that he, he wants us. If He's going to give us a challenge, it's for us to grow through that challenge. But, but the Beis Levi explains, the person had this understanding. If the Pnei Adar, if we can fight that Pnei Adar, Pnei Akelev, which is certainly the prevailing attitude in today's world, you want to bring God, you want to bring religion, come on. You're talking old, old-fashioned stuff here. Get, get with the real world. Yeah, we're living in the real world. We're living in the world of reality. We know who runs the show. But if we really knew who ran the show, if we really internalized it, if we really understood that Akash Baruch Hu is the controller of all events in the world, then what am I upset about? What am I jealous about? Do you have something that I, that I really should have? It can't be. Okay, do I have something that, that, that you don't have? It can't be. So Gaiva should, it falls away. Kinna falls away. Jealousy falls away. Revenge falls away. Hatred. There's, no, there's really no logic for it. All of the feelings, all of the reasons that the Chavaz Chaim talks about, that we're still suffering from because we, there is still, unfortunately, sin ashidim in the world. There's still Oshahar in the world. It don't, it, if we really understood exactly what's happening in this world, we wouldn't. What, what are we upset? What? Okay, it happened. Kosh Baruch Hu, that's my problem. I got, I got to take it up with a Kodesh Baruch Hu. I got a flat tire at the wrong time, or a guy cut me off on the highway, and therefore I, to, I missed the exit. Oh my gosh, the rage. My gosh, I have an appointment meeting. I have an appointment meeting, and I, I miss it. Take it easy. If you're in this p- predicament, Kodesh Baruch Hu put you here. It's an important concept. It's, it, I, I know it maybe sounds simple, but living it is not simple. Living it is actually very, very challenging. But that's what we have to do. Because if we do, then the Beis HaLevi says that's really the way to, to get to the Beit HaMachavero. To get to Beit HaMachavero and to eradicate all those negative feelings is to really understand there's no basis for the negative feelings. There's no logic to the negative feelings. Kodesh Baruch Hu runs the world. And just another, just dealing with the Eight Sahara. just maybe one other point that I, Chavetz Chaim doesn't say, but, but um, 
certainly I, the, the concept is a true concept that I, I think is very important also for us to remember. You know, we look, actually there's a story that would sort of in a way support the point I want to make, an incredible story that I heard from uh, the Vinowitz from Rochester, now he's actually living in Vegas, he told me this mice, incredible mice, I don't think I said it over here, where somebody, there was a big discussion of Chaim Kanevsky's that saw was at the table with, with a number of people, and Rabbi Davidovitz heard this from an eyewitness at the, at the discussion. And somehow got into Kolo people and the generations, and uh, so somehow the question was asked of Chaim Kanevsky's that's all, what, how does a Kodesh Baruch look at a Kolo fellow today? Today's world, with all the challenges and all the craziness, we know all the temptations, we know what, but this guy, and he's not a great Kailo guy, he's not a future Rosh Kailo, he's not a future major Talmud Chacham, he's not going to be a Paisik, he's, he's a plugger, let's give him a B- minus on the report card, you know, he comes a little late, maybe he loses a little bit early, maybe he takes a lecture coffee, but he's, he's plugging away, he's plugging away, he's doing okay, so let's give him a B, a B-, minus. like, why does Gosh Baruch look at him in today's world, that this guy, in today's world, with everything out there, is choosing to be... 28 years old, and he's got a couple of kids, and yet that's what he's doing. He's plugging away to learn Torah, to become a bigger time of to be a stronger Jew. How's that Kodesh Baruch look at him? Now, you can argue with Rukhaim Kanevsky. I'm not here to tell you that what he's saying is 1,000% true. I wouldn't argue with him, but if you want to, you can. But what he said just totally blew me away. In today's world, he said, Kodesh Baruch looks at that Kailu fellow like he's Rabbi Kiva Eger. Like it was Rikki Vegar, the Gadol Hadar, Rikki Vegar, the one that when, when he asks a question, we all tremble because you know his, his basically his questions are pretty much unanswerable. Okay, if you can come, if you can machave to his question, it's 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 a yontif. to try to get an answer to one of his questions. Pretty much, you know, pretty much throw in the towel. Like Rikki Vegar, a a luminary of an earlier generation, and his point was: Do we know the challenges? Do we understand how Kodesh Baruch Hu looks at us? We have no idea. Because when you face a challenge, it changes the whole, HaKadosh Baruch Hu calculates that, he understands that. And who's to say, and I tell the kids all the time, I'm, I'm amazed, I, I feel small. You know, I, we, we, you know I, I see these kids in high school, I have the I have Baruch Hashem, a Baruch of being in Vaitar now for, for, for 37 years. You see, you, these kids are amazing. <laughs> They're coming from background, they could have chosen to be in public school, they didn't have to be in a, in a Jewish school, they didn't have to be plugging away to learn Torah every day, they didn't have to work on Sneus and give up so many things to be able to just keep persevering and end in Eretz Yisrael, and become Tamir Chachamim, become um, incredible wives and, and Jewish mothers, incredible ladies who are leaders in the community when Baruch Shem, they are, they're living amongst us as well. There are people here doing amazing things, just even a Pico Robertson that uh, you wouldn't have imagined 20, 25 years ago that they had it within them. Kosh Baruch looks at these people, do we know how he calculates where they are, where we are, where we stand? Uh, are we excited? Are we happy? Well, we, we know we have faults. But we don't know how Kosh Baruch Hu looks at that. Kosh Baruch Hu sees, and that's why the Gemara says, beautiful pshat, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Yaakov, the, uh, Rabbi Akiv, and Rabbi Lezer. And the Gemara, uh, the Gemara is, is mentions that Rabbi Lezer was the Gadol Hadar. The Gadol Hadar. And he prayed for rain, it didn't come. And Rabbi Akiva, who was the second, known to be the second, assumed to be the second greater, greatest person in the generation, he goes and prays for rain, and the rains come. It says, Avinu Malkeinu, and the, pray, the, the rains came. And right away the Gemara says everyone started murmuring. Okay, maybe we had the rankings wrong. Okay, we got to, we got to check with the AP rankings. Uh, they had Rebbe one and Rebbe Kiva two. We got to switch it around though because Rebbe Eliezer couldn't bring the rain and Rebbe Kiva brought the rain. But the Gemara says no. A Basco comes out of Shemayim. A heavenly voice comes out and says Rebbe Eliezer is a good Ador. He's the greatest man of the, of the generation. So what's shot? So what happened? He says, but you don't understand something. The Gemara says Rabbi Yeleza was not Mavra Amidaisa, the Rabbi Kiva was. So I'll just tell you one shot, which is learned, uh, the Kaychli uh, learned this way. A number of Achorim learned this shot. There is a, there's a more fundamental shot, a more assumed shot, but I'll, let me show you this one with great Bali Musa learned this way. The meaning is, what does that mean? Rabbi Lezer was not a person who Mavra Midosav, and Rikiva was, and because Rikiva was, he had that special quality to be able to elicit from HaKadosh Baruch Hu rain, when the greatest man of the generation couldn't elicit rain. And the Pshat is, because what does Mavra Midosav mean? Mavra Midosav means going against your grain. Rabbi Kiva had a lot of work to do to become Rabbi Kiva. 
Rabbi Lezer grew up with a golden becher in his mouth. He was part of royalty from day one. He had a house of Kedusha. Everything around him was holy and uplifted and, and noble and great. He gets he, purely in terms of who he is es- essentially, the greatest man of the generation. Least flaws that you can have. But Rabbi Kiva, he fought for every single, he came from, he came from, first of all, he came from Gera. He, he, so he, his, his roots, his ancestors had no connection to Judaism from, from a genetic point of view. And not just that, they say that before he turned to, towards Torah, he hated Tamir Chacham. He, he literally despised them. He would literally want them dead. That's how much he hated Tamil Chacham. So he had work to do. And he became Rabbi Akiva. He became the, the Rebbe of 24,000 students. He was the one who brought Torah to the south and rebuilt Torah with, with his five Tamidim, the great Rebbe Akiva, unbelievable person. Rebbe Moshe, Moshe Ben who says, who needs, you don't need me to, uh, to receive the Torah. You could have given the Torah to, to uh, Rebbe Akiva, says Moshe Takodesh Baruch Hu. That Rebbe Akiva fought for every step he, he was able to achieve. It wasn't easy. Not easy. You overcome, then that's that's saying something special and that is able we that we cannot calculate we cannot know if Reb Chaim Kanievsky Zatzal can say that a, a Kailo guy an average Kailo guy is like a Riki Vager so uh, I, I don't know again I know there are amazing stories in this room that I know I know that in Rabbi Summer Shul there are amazing people holy people sincere people with incredible stories who knows? Who knows how 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 Baruch Hu sees sees every individual sees uh, this Malcolm Torah sees Klai Yisrael? We have no idea. And therefore, we can we can never give up. We can never have that sense because that sense is devil. We have that sense that somehow we're not worthy, and that sense really that Nakuda is so critical because it the, it was the bane of our existence as to why we're suffering from a Tisha B'Av. In last week's parsha. We know the night of Tisha B'Av lives in infamy. We know we're, we're waiting for the time that it changes. It's going to change, Rez Hashem, the car of Yemenu. But in the meantime, Tisha B'Av throughout history has been a, a horrific day. A day of devastation and tragedy. Why? Because the Kodesh Baruch Hu says to Klai Yisrael, and Moshe Benu recounts it in Parashat Devarim, the whole story with the Meraglim, with the spies. And Hashem says to, to the Jewish people, this is why you cry. You're crying because you can't go into Eretz Israel. You're crying because you question my ability. I'll give you a reason to cry. And Tisha B'Av became a reason to cry for more than more than one reason throughout the centuries. But but the pasuk says something very interesting. It, it's not that the, the Jewish people didn't believe Hakadosh Baruch can do it. But that really takes a real you know mental limitation to feel because Rocha can make this galaxy can make the universe the galaxy can make the universe okay this ever expanding universe he can create it he can put it all together he can deal with everything but he, he can't take us in territory it's relative that doesn't really make it that's not what they said and the, the Pusik in Devarim sort of fills in some of the blanks from the story of Mamidbar and the Pusik says what did they say why did you bring us out here, Moshe, to die in the in the desert? Kibasinas Hashem Olakenu. Kosh Baruch Hu hates us. Also, what do you mean hates? Hates? Kosh Baruch Hu can hate. Kosh Baruch Hu is the most loving being in the world. You you, you recognize who Kosh Baruch Hu is and what he's done and what he created, and you're you're overwhelmed with a sense of awe of his kindness and his love that he gave us the the air to breathe. What do you mean he hates us? How could the Klai so make such a statement? And there's the foot of fields in the blank. The Sephora says he hates us because in Mitzrayim we worship the Vodazar. This is that Yetzar going at it again. He's so adept at Yetzar. He's so good. So in other words, they were convinced. Now maybe there were other factors that got them to believe this. But at the end of the day, the Sephora, the, the Sephora tells us that the rationale of the Jewish people in not believing they, were, they, they could go and tear to throw, not because God couldn't do it, he wouldn't do it. Because he won't take us, we're not worthy enough. He hates us, and he, and he should hate us. Because look at us, we worship the worship Avodah we did rotten things in Mitzrayim. And he can't get off of that. He can't forget that. That's what the Yitzhara does. You, God knows what you did last night. God knows what you did for, for 10, 10 years or 20 years of your life. God knows all that. You? Very good. The answer we have to give back is yes, exactly. Because God loves me so much, that the minute I decide to move closer to him, even a fraction of an inch, ah, that's, that's huge. God grabs that and takes it 
and catapults us to to incredible levels. So I know that I'm I have some stuff not that I'm not proud of. It doesn't matter. It could have been last night, but today's a new day. And what? So I'm gonna miss another Satan. That's what happens. Never put the yeshiva guys sometimes. They they get upset at themselves and they start getting down. They start getting depressed. And what, what's the whole purpose? Well, what's the whole purpose? Your life. You got today, you got tomorrow, you got the rest of your life. You're gonna wallow in your past right now? Save it for Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, you'll, you'll deal with the past, right? Now you got, you got a future to worry about. You can't wallow in depression and, 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 and all types of anxiety and feelings of, uh, of uh, inferiority and, and not being worthy. Okay? It's, it's destructive. Kushbar, who knows? He's, he's, tell, he's telling us how much he loves us. And some of the H was very good at convincing us otherwise. So if he recognizes how we understand, wow, look at Akush Baruch Hu's love. That he, that if he looks at a generation and he sees that I, I, I'll take everything into account, then those words could not have really, if, if they realized that, it, it couldn't have happened. Unfortunately, somehow the Eitzor got to them and sort of discombobulated them and they said those words, incredible words, because Shabbat who hates us. But that's what the Pasuk says. So he state. So we can, to feel this, to feel the worthiness, to feel the, the positivity, to recognize that, yeah, I, again, we're not supposed to walk around like we're better than anybody else, but it's not better than anybody else. We're part of the generation, we're all in it together, and we have to look at everybody else as being better than us, but, but I got what to be proud of. I'm not gonna look at myself and beat myself up and say that, that, that I'm not worthy, because that, that is a destructive place to be. And the Torah is telling us that's why Tisha B'Av happened, because we felt we, we are not gonna be Sent to get taken to Eretz Yisrael, and therefore we can't redo that and feel chas v'shalom that we're not worthy of being brought back to Eretz Yisrael. I mean, just one other one other point, just the uh, the mashah. There's a mashah at the end of Makos, famous Gemara at the end of Makos, where Rabbi Kiva's walking with his. And it's interesting. Somebody I was in another shul. Somebody showed me a video. I think it was literally on Tisha B'av this year in Eretz Yisrael that they saw a fox coming out of the. Harabayas. So I guess reminder that we, we don't have the base of not that we needed that as a reminder, but it's just interesting. Shualim Hilchuboy. The foxes are, are are going on the on the Harabayas and they started to cry. Rikiva started to laugh. And Rikiva, why you laugh why are you cry? Why are we cry? We're crying. It's, a, it's horrible. Look at look at the devastation. Why are you laughing? So I'm laughing and I think it's really the same Nakuda. I'm laughing, he says, because I know in my heart. That, is, that the issue is going to happen. So the, the prophecies that predicted all of the negativity are also the same prophecies that predicted the ultimate salvation. And when I see those come to fruition, I know the other is going to come to fruition. And he was able to inject, even at a time of sorrow, it was a sad time. They were dealing with the destruction of, of the base of Migdash. They were living in horrific times, but it's so critical to feel that way that even within the destruction, you still have to have that positivity. No, it's going to turn around. It's going to turn around. I can't give up. I can't get down. I can't just throw in the towel. We cannot, we cannot do that. We can't afford to do that. We're Klai Yisrael. We can't throw in the towel. We, because Baruch Hu needs us to, to keep the fight, the good fight, to, to have that vision, to have that destiny in our minds at all times. But Masha adds an amazing point. What, what did in specifically the Rekiva see? He saw that without Jews... Eretz Yisrael can't survive. Because even though there was apparently enough time for the, for the Goyim to have started to, to take it over and to start maybe, you know, uh, uh, building it up and to uh, trying to re rehabilitate Eretz Yisrael to something that he saw wasn't happening. And when he saw it wasn't happening, he saw that's a prediction. Zechariah says, Eretz Yisrael is a very unique place. It's a magical, mystical place. We know that, but, we, but it's very clear. And this is something that history even backs up even more than what Rebekah was able to see. We, now, we know it over centuries that Eretz Yisrael needs Klai Yisrael. If it doesn't have Klai Yisrael in Eretz Yisrael, it will not do what Eretz Yisrael could do. And Mark Twain shows up, we get, you know, we, 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 get, we read his, uh, his essay, I, I came to, to this place, this God-forsaken place, it's desolate, you, he can't imagine anything growing here, he can't imagine anything happening here, it's a place, who would want to be there? Swampland and emptiness and nothingness, yeah. Who can imagine? Look at it now. Who's leading the world in agriculture? Who's got the most amazing fruits? Who's got the most amazing ability to make land do things that who can ever imagine? Eretz Yisrael, we're doing it. Why? Because we're Klai Yisrael. 
So if we can, if that was an achama for be akivan for his chaveru, when they answered him akivan achamtanu, oh, you gave us an achama, it's going to happen. So we should certainly, we see Eretz Yisrael, and we see the Nisim, and we know the Nisim, our, our survival's in it. So Yaakov Emden already said it many, we've quoted many times before, Chaynafshi swears that the survival of the Jewish people throughout this exile is the greatest miracle of them all. So we know what's going to happen. We see the miracles, we see the Yad Hashem. We certainly can take these words. If the predictions of the negativity have proven to be true, sadly they have proven to be true. We've seen it throughout throughout our bloody history and certainly throughout the Holocaust and it, it certainly affirmed the, the horrible predictions that, that the, the Torah says. But we also know, the Torah says another prediction. The prediction is, we're coming back and we're going to be in Eretz Yisrael. So Be'ez Hashem, if we can, we can really fulfill this Tzipis Ali Yeshua and have the Bitacho and have the recognition every single day of our lives that it's all a Kaddish Baruch Hu. He helps me, He challenges me, He's doing everything for me and therefore there's no reason for me to be negative about anybody else. You're all, every, everyone else is like a little puppet in, in, in my little world. That's really what's going on. So you, you, you can make a decision to to take money away from me, but at the end of the day, it wouldn't have happened unless HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted it to happen. So I could take it to bed and maybe have a tie against you, but what are you getting so emotional about? What are you living a life of vengeance? Why, the, why, why is your neck bulging with, the, with your veins? Take it easy. You got a problem with HaKadosh Baruch Hu? That never, oh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, no. HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves me. I love HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Everything's good. It's a neighbor I can't have. What are you doing? It's a, it, it would change our, our whole attitude of the world, our whole perspective would be different. Bez Hashem, we can take this to heart to really fulfill that the peace of Yeshua Bez Hashem will be zocha very, very quickly in our days, speedily to dance with every member of Klai Yisrael with the, with the fulfillment, fulfillment of that the peace of Yeshua would be as a Meshach and Hei Once again, we'd like to thank Rabbi Stuberger for his wonderful Divrei Chizuk and Mir Hashem. His word should be in his time that we should be in Metzapel uh, Yeshua. And uh, again, we'd like to thank Tomer and his family for sponsoring. And the Chovetz Chaim video will be at 3.15. Shkoach, everyone.